Hey everyone, I'm Ash. I'm just gonna be walking you through Benthos Studio. So what it is, what you can use it for, um, what are its core features. Um, the first thing I'm gonna say is that this is a beta right now, which means two things. Firstly, stuff's gonna change over time. Um, so, you know, what I'm showing you here is as it currently is, um, but things might move around in the UI um, and look a bit different in the future. Some features might be changed ever so slightly, uh, hopefully all for the better, but just it's not going to look and feel exactly as I'm, I'm showing it right now at the point where you're necessarily uh, viewing this video. Um, the other thing I'll say is because it's a beta, uh, there's no there's no like production guarantees as to uh, data retention and stuff like that. So any configs that you're building in, in this application, um, don't rely on that lasting forever. Um, every now and then things are going to get wiped during migrations and stuff intentionally. So um, just just be w aware of that. Uh, obviously, if you're looking at the application right now and it says it's production ready, then it's production ready. Um, but yeah, as you can see on the splash page, it, page, it makes it quite clear that warning, this is beta. Um, so you can find this application at studio.benthos.dev. Um, like I said, it's a beta, which means, you know, maybe there's going to be downtime every now and then. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is click get started. Um, that's going to take you to a login screen. So I use OAuth um, and right now we only support GitHub, but eventually I'll probably add some more options in there. But if you've got a GitHub account, then you can just use that. Um, and the first thing that you could do is you're going to get this uh, screen, gives you a little summary of your account. So there's news on the right. Those are items that I will update every now and then. So if there's new features or something's changed or um, there's been some horrible disaster, then I'll probably post about it here. So the, the sort of user home screen um, is a good place to check every now and then if you're regularly using the application. Um, and then on the left hand side, you've just got the sessions area. So um, you're going to be prompted to create a session. Just come up with some arbitrary name. Uh, doesn't doesn't need to be um, anything smart. I'm going to call mine Meow. Um, and then once you create that, you get an, you you enter the the session view. So what a session is in Benthos Studio Land is it's a collection of files. So you can have multiple files within a session, um, and these could be Benthos configs or they could just be blob lang mappings. Um, and the idea is that the the session is it's kind of like a repository um, where they all exist in, in, in a specific place. So you could have like um, a particular application of Benthos that you're working with where, you know, there's a few different configurations and some cluster and then a few blob line mappings, but they're all logically um, one, one thing. Um, and then you can have another session for another one, for example. Uh, but the, the other thing that makes sessions uh, kind of interesting is that you can share them so you can make your session public and share the files with, with other people so they can see um, what you what you've built and, and access them um, and you can also pick a specific benthos schema for a session so you could have one session that is um, validated and executed against benthos version 3 schema um, and you can have another one that tracks benthos version 4 for example and what you can also do is you can you can synchronize a session with um, the schema of your own custom plugins so if you're using the benthos plugin apis to build your own custom internal um, connectors and processes and things um, you can actually synchronize your custom benthos instance with a session and then you can validate against the schema that your plugins have so just because you're using custom plugins doesn't mean you can't use benthos studio to to build and, and validate those configs um, and now because we don't have any files yet in our session then the first thing we're, we're prompted to do is add our first file uh, there's a bunch of different ways of doing that. Um, you can either pick a stream or bloblang uh, config. Um, you can also upload stuff. Uh, and obviously, you can tidy things up with folders and things. So I've just built a stream config. This is just a regular old Benthos config that I'm making. And we get a graph view. So this is this is just a visual representation of what the config is. Because we don't have anything, there's nothing really to show. So what we've got is these buttons that prompt us to do things like add an input add an output, that kind of stuff. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an input. So I'm going to click the add an input button. Um, what I've decided in Studio is rather than having like a draggy, droppy, um, kind of clunky um, visual uh, tools, uh, I just have buttons in inside the visual thing itself. So to add an input, you click add an input, and then you can sort of build the graph of nodes by clicking on the actual graph itself rather than having some weird tray and then dragging things and it just being a bit messy. Um, 
maybe that'll change in the future if there's if there's feedback and people really want drag and droppy kind of menus but this this seems nice and tidy to me um once you when you when you click add an input you pick one from the list um obviously if you've synchronized your custom plugins and your custom plugins will appear here as well um i'm going to do a nats jet stream input and what i'm then given is is a list of fields to to fill in um some of these are marked uh required um and some of them are optional i'm just going to quickly fill these in with just placeholders i'm also going to add an output of my data i'm just going to do an http client here and again i'm just going to put in some placeholders um, once I have filled in all that stuff and added it, you'll see in the visual view here, um, in between the buttons for adding in more components, uh, there's now, um, there's visualization of we've got an input, we've got an output. You can click those to change the configs. Um, and then there's, there's a little line showing you, uh, the data is flowing from one of these components to another. Um, I'm going to add a processor as well. So I'm going to click add a processor and I'm just going to add in a blob line mapping here. So what you'll notice is we have a field in this configuration view for the blob line mapping and that itself is, is linted and um, validated. So if we've got um, any problems in the mapping, they'll, they'll show up right here. Um, we don't have to check that separately. Um, so I'm just going to really clumsily write my mapping here, um, take my time with it read the error messages and stuff and then submit. And now you can see that we've got this um, larger visual, uh, which includes an input processor and an output. I can just keep adding processes here and there's uh, no real consequence to that. You're just adding it to the config just as you normally would. And the visualization will automatically organize things. You're not having to drag and organize stuff yourself. Um, it'll just automatically do a nice visualization. And then another cool thing is this this config that we're building is real. Like it's it's not just a visualization of what a config could be. Um, there's actually a, a, a full config in the background that you're building that you can just see at any point. Um, and you can make manual changes to the YAML yourself if you want to. You don't have to just use the visual tool. You can, you can go back and forth. There's also a run button. So um, when you click that, um, you will see uh, this visualization that is still just the graph view. And what it does, is it gives you a little summary of what's happening when you run this config on the right hand side. Uh, we've got a problem, which is the the inputs and outputs that we're using are actually networked components. So um, it's not going to run those for us. Uh, it's not going to actually connect to NAT's chat stream um, unless unless we want it to. Uh, and there's going to be options for that um, at a later date. But for now, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click that component. It's given us a little red red marker to say that there's there's like an issue with this with running a, a mock of this component. And what I can do is I can just click that and I can just add um, a mock uh, message to it. And what will happen is when we run this config, that mock message will just flow through the system. And that's what you can see now. So we, we run it and we get some nice um, little buttons and things. Um, on each component that just tells us how many messages did this particular component see, how many did it receive, and how many has it written out. Um, you'll also see a marker telling you if there's been any errors that have occurred at this processor or output. Um, and you can then click them. And what that'll do is it will actually tell you um, the summary of, of what happened during the run. So it'll tell you which what messages were consumed and produced and it kind of lists them as like events that happened. Um, so here I can see I consumed a message and I wrote one out and then I can click another processor and I can I can see the same information, but obviously the um, events are gonna be different. Um, and then at the output, I can just see what, what messages eventually got rooted to this particular output. So if you had some interesting brokering going on, you'd be able to use this visualization tool to see what kind of messages would trickle to which particular destinations. So I'm just gonna to go to the YAML view now and I'm just gonna change my config. Um, this is just a text editor. Um, so you can just copy paste any Benthos config. I'm gonna take one from the Benthos website. I'm just gonna paste that in. Um, and then if I switch to the graph view, you'll see the uh, visualization of that config um, because the two are uh, tied together one-to-one. Um, -to -one. So I'm actually gonna pick a, a more complicated example. Um, this is a config that has an input processors and output and the output itself has a batching mechanism which has more processes. So you can see in the visualization here that we've got um, the input section, processor section, um, 
we've got a processor that has a child processor. Um, so the visualization makes that clear as well. Um, and then in the output section, we've got these processes that are executed on batches, which is then sent to the output. So that's why it's kind of, it's it's uh, ordered the way that it is. You can see that you run messages through an archive that goes through um, compress and then it gets routed to the AWS S3. So I'm just gonna go back to the session view. That's, that's stream configs. Um, go and play with that, uh, post your own configs in there and see what it looks like. Um, see what happens when you run it. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my session and create a blob lang mapping. So the, the visual tool for, for blob lang mappings is, is slightly different. Um, so what you get here is you get your, your window uh, for writing in your, your mapping. There's no visual tool for this as of right now. Um, so you're just writing in your, your actual blob lang. And what you can do is you've got on the right a test input window where you can just put in some arbitrary um, data that gets fed into your mapping. Um, and then you see the test output as as you edit. So you can you can modify your uh, blob lang mapping here and see in real time the um, the changes that that happen as a result of that. Um, and as you can see, we've got we've got all the same linting and um, error checking that we might we might expect from a um, an IDE. Um, there's a download button. So once you're happy with your mapping, you can just quickly download it to your local disk. Um, and because this is a session, when you're editing your configs, um, you'll actually be able to, it's, it's kind of treated as like one folder. Um, so when you use stuff like from um, in, a, in a benthos config mapping to import a blob lang mapping, um, you can actually use relative paths and it will, it will run those mappings. So here what I've done is I've changed my blob lang processor to just use the mapping that I just created in my session. Um, and because it's just a file, uh, it works. It will just it will execute that in the run window. So it kind of it kind of assumes when when you're running the config that it's kind of running as if you were running Benthos in that folder. Um, so yeah, I can use I can use all these visual uh, run tools to to test out my blob lang mappings as they would exist inside a Benthos config. Um, and there's also a download session as a zip folder button in the session view itself. So you don't have to download each individual file. Um, eventually, I'll probably add some some Git support um, and you'll be able to sync either push or pull um, to a session using Git. Um, I haven't quite decided what the best way to do that is. I don't want it to be tied to GitHub necessarily. So um, I'm kind of thinking a more general options there, but uh, feedback welcome and if you've got particular things that you want to request. Um, and the other thing that you can do, so like I mentioned, you can have custom schemas for a session. So there's there's two ways of doing that. You can either select an official version, so V3 or V4 right now, um, or you can you can click this sync a custom schema button. And what that'll do is it'll give you a um, command to run from your custom Benthos binary, which has your plugins um, as part of it. And then that Benthos instance will synchronize its schema to the session that you've got. Um, you get a one use token for, for doing that. So you don't have to type in your password or anything like that. It's just like a, just a quick um, short lived token that you'll need. And uh, that's it. That's all I want to show. So, you know, try it out, um, have fun. Let me know how it goes. There's a, there's a channel on the discord specifically for Benthos studio feedback. So if you've got things you want to request or um, any ideas and stuff or any complaints, um, then you can you can post them there. Um, you can also send feedback to. I mean, just go to benthos.dev/community if you want other options for for getting in touch. Uh, thanks. Have fun. Bye.